This video will hopefully try to explain to you why the power rule works. So let's recall the power rule for derivatives. The derivative of x to any power, uh, we simply bring down the power in front and then multiply times x and then we subtract a power. So you think about bringing the power down in front and then subtracting 1. That's the power rule. Pretty simple to use. For example, the derivative of x cubed, very simple, bring down the 3, subtract 3, you get 3x squared. Done. This is very easy. Um, but the question is, why does this work? Let's find out. I'm going to answer this in two ways. The first way is we're going to look at just x cubed, the one we just did, and see that it turns out to be 3x squared. Uh, and then I'm going to do this in general for any uh, power. So in order to do this, we need to do the derivative. And remember that the derivative is the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all divided by delta x. Woo! That's fun. Now let's notice a few things. First off, f of x is x cubed. Great. So that takes care of that one. And then f of x plus delta x, well, we basically just take the stuff and put it inside the x. So it's x plus delta x cubed, like that. Sweet. Pretty straightforward. Now let's go ahead and do this limit. For the first part, we have f of x plus delta x, which is that. And we're going to have to multiply this out, but let's just put it in for now. So we have x plus delta x quantity cubed minus x cubed all divided by delta x. Uh, and then yeah, this, this thing here, we have to multiply this out. So you have three x plus delta x terms and you have to foil two of them together and then foil the last one together. Or if you remember uh, Pascal's triangle and I think, I think it's called like the binomial expansion coefficients, you get something that looks like this. You start with the first term, so the first term is just going to be x times x times x, which is x cubed, and then you decrease the powers of x. So x cubed, x squared, x, and then x to the 0, which is 1. And then at the same time, you increase the powers of delta x. So here you have delta x to the 0, delta x to the first, delta x squared, and delta x cubed. Uh, and then the last part of that coefficient expansion is the actual numbers, the coefficients. And the third row of Pascal's triangle is 1, 3, 3, 1. So that's what we put in here. x cubed plus 3x squared delta x plus 3x delta x squared plus 1 delta x cubed. And don't forget, you have that minus x cubed at the end. And then this is all divided by delta x. Don't worry, it gets better. Watch. That's what we have right now. Um, and let's simplify, because watch. Ha, x cubed and minus x cubed. That's the key to this, really, is that those two things go away, and we're left with this. x cubes go away, we're left with the second line. And now notice, uh, you have a delta x in every term, at least one of them. Uh, and now this is a common error. Yes, you can cancel this out as long as you have a delta x in every term, and you do. Uh, so you can imagine factoring out delta x out of all of these, like this. So I took the delta x in the red box out of all three terms, and then, very nicely, these two cancel. And this is perfect, because now we don't have that 0 in the denominator anymore, and now we can just plug in 0 for the delta x's. And so the next step is limit delta x approaches 0, and we just rewrite the same thing. 3x squared plus 3x delta x plus delta x squared. But wait, delta x is going to 0. So that and that are both going to 0. 0, 0. Hey, and what are we left with? There it is, 3x squared, which is what we started with. And so we've shown, using the limit definition, that the derivative of x cubed is indeed 3x squared. Woo! Now for the fun part. Hey, don't worry if you get lost in this. It's higher level math, and if you don't understand it, that's OK. The purpose of this is just to show you where the power rule comes from. You don't have to know this for the test. You don't have to know this for the AP test. And unless you go on to major in mathematics, it's OK if this is completely over your head. But it's kind of fun anyway. Here we go. I want to take the derivative of x to the n and show that the derivative is simply n times x to the n minus 1. That's our power rule. 
uh, we bring down the n in front and then we subtract 1. So that's my goal. And the way I'm going to do this is just by starting with this. So we have f, x plus, or f of x equals x to the n. And we're going to do the limit definition. So we have the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of delta x plus, or f of x plus delta x. And I'm just going to go ahead and substitute right away. So we'll have x plus delta x. We'll have stuff to the n minus x to the n divided by delta x. And the reason for that is because f of x plus delta x is simply x plus delta x to the n. You just plug in this into x, and there you go. Well, we have to multiply that out. And the way we have to do that is by using uh, Pascal's triangle or the binomial coefficients. So here's what it looks like in the very general form. The first term is just x to the n. Cool. The second term takes one power off the x and adds a power onto the delta x. So we have x to the n minus 1 and then delta x to the first. Then the second term, same thing. x to the n minus 2 delta x squared. This process continues until you reach the end. So the last two terms are x to the first, delta x to the n minus 1. And then the very last term, there is no x, and it's just delta x to the n. Don't forget, you do have the minus x to the n at the very end. Um, cool. Oh, but wait, we're not done yet, because remember, when you expand out a binomial, you get all those silly coefficients. And here's what the coefficients are in terms of n. It requires something called a choosing function, but basically this coefficient is n choose 1. This coefficient is n choose 2. Uh, if you notice the pattern, the pattern is always what the power of, I guess, the x, the delta x is in this case. So n choose 1, n choose 2, blah, blah, blah. This coefficient is going to be n choose n minus 1. And this coefficient here is n choose n. Technically, the first coefficient is n choose 0. That's fine, too. That all belongs there. So we have all those things, and it's all divided by... <laughs> don't forget the delta x on the bottom. There it is. Whew. Sweet. Now, um, here's how we're going to deal with this. First off, n choose 0 means how many ways can you choose 0 things out of n objects? And the answer to that is 1. You just choose 0 objects, and that's it. So it's 1. Um, so I'm going to replace this with 1. Same thing down here. n choose n. If you have seven socks, there's only one way to choose all of them. You grab all seven socks. So that's all. also one. Uh, and now, notice that because the first coefficient was 1x to the n, and the very last thing is also a negative x to the n, that's that magical key that those two drop out. And so our next line becomes this. That first term and the last term dropped off, so we're left with all the choices, basically, with all the n choose 1, x to the n minus 1, etc., blah, blah, blah. Uh, now, if you're clever, you can notice this. Hey, we have an x, delta x in the bottom, and then each term in the top also has a delta x. Check it out. So this next line, I'm going to factor out all of these delta x's so that they can cancel with the bottom. Here's what that looks like. <laughs> this problem is so long, it can't even fit on the screen. Oh, well. Uh, so I factored out all the green delta x's. There it is on that right side there. Uh, in green, and so that's going to cancel with the bottom. Excellent. And then again, this solves the problem of, hey, we have a zero in the denominator, but not anymore since we got these two to cancel. Great. Now we can actually plug in zero for all the rest of the delta x's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that in the same step. So look, this delta x, this delta x, and all the delta x's in between, those all go to zero. So, hooray. Great. What are we left with? Well, we're left with this term here, which is n choose 1 times x to the n minus 1. Well, let's think about this. If you have 13 different elephants, and you want to choose one of them, how many ways of there are doing that? Well, there's 13, because that's how many choices you have for one elephant. So in general, n choose 1 is simply n. Uh, and so this answer is simply n times x 
to the n minus 1, which is what? Yes, it's the power rule. Look at that. We did it. We started with f of x was x to the n, and we ended up with f prime of x equals that. Bring down the power x to the n minus 1. Hopefully your appreciation of mathematics is deepened, and maybe you're confused. That's okay, too. Have fun.